Hello everyone, I'm Michael. And I'm Anna. And we're both neuroscientists at the Max Planck Institute of Neurobiology in Martinsried, Germany. Today we're going to talk about our projects just recently published in Neuron. In my case, I generated a cellular resolution atlas of the larval zebrafish brain. And I investigated the circuits underlying optic flow processing also in zebrafish larvae. Larval zebrafish are a great organism for system neuroscience studies. This is due to their small size and the conserved basic vertebrate neuroarchitecture. Larval zebrafish are close to transparent. Together with the genetic tools available, this makes it possible to visualize the activity of all the neurons simultaneously using fluorescent microscopy. This has led to some fantastic studies that showed how remote brain regions interact to generate behavior. However, at this stage, it is not very well understood how these different brain regions are connected via neurons. To address this issue, we decided to generate an online repository of single neuron morphologies. For this, we made use of a genetic tool that labels individual neurons out of the entire neuronal population in a random and stochastic manner. In its basic premise, it's very similar to a Golgi stain, but instead of using silver, what we have is a membrane-targeted GFP, which makes it possible to use modern imaging technologies such as confocal laser scanning microscopy to acquire the images. In our typical workflow, we select fish that have one or several neurons labeled. We then clear the brain using a passive clarity protocol to ensure that we have high imaging qualities in the deeper, more ventral parts of the brain. Next, we label the neurons using an antibody staining against GFP, and we also generate a second channel in which we label the overall structure of the entire brain. In order to compare the neurons we obtained from different fish, we had to morph them onto a reference brain which we generated. Using this approach, we were able to generate a database of more than 2,000 single neuron morphology. In addition, we also used this workflow to image more than 100 transgenic lines and characterize their expression pattern throughout the brain. We wanted to make this database available to researchers from all over the world. To this end, we generated an interactive website that allows users to browse through our collections from the comfort of their desk. As an example, this is exactly what Anna did when she was investigating the neural circuits that underlie optic flow in larva zebrafish. And she's going to talk about that now. Optic flow is the sensation you feel when you see a large part of the environment moving. For example, if you look out of the window of a moving train. Many animals show characteristic responses towards optic flow, for example, moving their eyes to keep the image in the eye stable. We investigated processing of optic flow in zebrafish larvae. To evoke the sensation of optic flow in larval zebrafish, we show them a reduced stimulus. For this, we place them in an LED arena where they see moving gratings. With a technique called functional imaging, we can see how neurons think. This is possible in transgenic animals, which contain a fluorescent protein in their brain, which lights up when the neuron is active. This is especially useful in larval zebrafish because they are very small and quite transparent. We know that neurons in a brain region called the protectum react to optic flow. Based on this, we wanted to find out more about the underlying circuits of optic flow processing. In the first step, we used the new technique Fujima to find out more about the function and morphology of these optic flow responsive neurons. For Fujima, we first perform functional imaging to determine how neurons in the protectum react to optic flow. In a second step, we focus a laser beam on one interesting cell that we know the function of. A special protein called photoactivatable GFP is then activated and becomes visible in this one cell and we can determine the shape of the neuron that we know the function of. Using Fujima, we actually did find morphological differences of cells with different response types. To learn more about the pretactal optic flow processing circuit, we use the single neuron atlas that Michael told you about. For this, we circled the area where we had previously found the interesting neurons and then searched in the database. The pretactal neurons we find project to either of two brain regions, either to the ventral hindbrain or to the cerebellum. Both areas are known as premotor centers, that means they prepare commands for the muscles to move. 
Together, the findings of me and my team outline a pathway of optic flow processing in zebrafish larvae. This comprehensive view was only possible via the combination of different techniques, including Fujima and the use of the single neuron database. Together, our papers contain a resource for the scientific community and investigate optic flow processing in larval zebrafish. And if you like this video, you can find out more about our research by reading our papers.